Welcome to U.S. Farm Report, a public information program brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this local area. The National Farmers Organization takes pride in inventing a marketing system to meet the needs of the 20th century, collective bargaining for agriculture. NFO represents new thinking in a new generation of farmers. U.S. Farm Report presents Housewives' Concern for Agriculture. Here is Women's Director Doris Berry of KTVS-TV, Sterling, Colorado. It's a pleasure to have this opportunity to talk with uh, housewives concerning agriculture. And I have some very special guests to talk about this very vital subject. And I'd like to introduce them, starting to my immediate left. We're very happy to have with us Mrs. Alex, uh, Pauline, can I call you Pauline from now on? <laughs> Hoffner, and she is from Greeley, Colorado. And seated next to uh, Pauline is Mrs. Richard, and from now on will be Bonnie and Doris, okay? Uh, Rannick of Kersey, Colorado. And seated next to uh, Bonnie is Mrs. Adam West. Maybe I should say, uh, this is Mrs. Rose West. Does uh, housewives, uh, housewives boycott mean anything to you? Uh, and I'm sure then you'll know who Rose is. And we're very happy to have all of you here to talk with us. And we might uh, just very uh, briefly here, I don't want to give her too much time because she'll take it all, you know, if we ask uh, Rose to uh, tell us how did this uh, Housewives boycott uh, get started in Denver, Colorado? Well, uh, Doris, we had uh, watched our grocery bill. Now, I say our. We shop uh, in a neighborly fashion. We pool our gasoline and uh, go to the stores. And we had watched our grocery bill going up with no explanation as to why. And I think the crowning blow was when my bottle of olives that I'd been buying for 33 cents within three weeks went up to 46 cents. The olives did it. Yeah, uh, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. So uh, four of us in the same neighborhood uh, got together. We called a, a divisional manager of one of the stores and asked him to come out and explain to us, if he could, the, uh, why prices had, ri had risen. And after, oh, a couple of hours talking and a couple of cups of coffee or three or four, uh, he said, he laughed, and he said, well, uh, really, girls, you've never uh, protested. We don't think you ever will. You'll never leave your kitchens or your coffee cups. And you, you're too lazy, let's face it. So it why really? do we bother? No wonder you got mad. You know. Well, we got a little upset. So from there, we went on to uh, the other uh, chain stores. We asked them all, and we thought maybe we could get the answers to some questions. They didn't answer us, so we started out with our petitions. And uh, when we called our boycott, and this is not a word that I like. I don't like this word, but we haven't found a good one to use instead. But we do not believe in any sort of violence. All that we did was... Uh, we just had absenteeism from the stores, and it worked beautifully. But this cannot go on forever. But in all this time, you have to realize that we were learning. Every man that walked into these meetings, the first person he blamed was a farmer. And we couldn't believe that. Uh, whether you realize it or not, most city housewives have some agricultural background, either parents or grandparents, somebody has been on the farm in the family. And uh, so we immediately refuted this. You can look at your uh, market reports, uh, what the farmer has been getting for his products. So it isn't the farmer's fault. No, but you didn't know this really to begin with, did uh, you? I knew it, but uh, as many of the women don't know it, they still don't know it. They have to be educated. Uh, they have to be made aware of the fact that here is a farmer not getting enough for his product, and here is a consumer paying too much. True. And the, the women have uh, cooperated beautifully, and uh, we city women do want to learn. We have all the sympathy in the world for the farmer, and uh, the farmer is gaining more sympathy every day from us, too. Well, now, these uh, ladies who are with us today, too, uh, can, I think, uh, give a few views on this. And, Bonnie, if you will, do you think that uh, 
the uh, city housewife uh, is to blame for the high prices, in your opinion? Well, no, not at all. <clears throat> Although, one thing that uh, comes to my mind is that the housewives don't complain about maybe the car they buy or the uh, fur coats they buy or some extravagant thing that they would buy, but yet they complain about the food. Why? Uh, we have to have food. Why would we complain about food? And actually, the farmer, we raise uh, milk cows. We sell our milk. Maybe we get, um, well, maybe 50 cents a gallon. And what would you pay for 50 cents a gallon? Uh, Put that on your list, Rose. <laughs> <laughs> so what would the uh, housewives in town pay for their milk? A dollar, 10 cents a gallon. Half gallon? Isn't mm -hmm. that right? A dollar, 10 cents a gallon. I said gallon. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Well then, uh, actually, you you are farm people. You mm -hmm. you live on a farm. Yeah, I certainly do. How about your family? Do you have children? Six children. Do you uh, feel that? Uh, well, I bet I think I'll ask uh, uh, Pauline here. Do you think that the housewife is to blame in any way for the high cost of living, Pauline? Go ahead. No, and you want me to tell what I think? <laughs> I just think yes, exactly what I want you to do. Well, I think the housewife's got a little bit lazy. She wants her poor slice of meat in a package instead of getting it off of the chunk of meat it should be sliced off of. And the packaged meat does lose its flavor. And she wants to go to the supermarket and pick up everything instead of going to different stores. What do you mean, like... Um Hardware, um, all hardware, that. and a hairspray, and how about the soap that she buys, dollars and dollars worth? I never have heard a complain about that. And uh, yet, she thinks uh, she's saving a lot of time by purchasing all these things in the big chain stores. She doesn't think about this that they maybe ought to put in a beauty shop. She takes time off to go to the beauty shop. She takes time for lots of other things, but. Her idea is when she goes into a supermarket, she's saving time. I don't believe she is. And not only that, she uh, gets to the cash register and uh, she looks at her bill and my, what a food bill, but what does she have in her cart? It's not all food. But in your opinion then, she's reflecting this onto the farmer? That's right. That he's getting too much and a bill too high? That's right. But I don't believe that the farmer uh, puts uh, the hairspray on the market, the baby bottles, and the soap. You don't raise the those. shoe polish. <laughs> no, I don't think we raise any. But yet she puts this on her food bill. Now, what about uh, this, Rose? Uh, as far as the housewives' the organization as such, have, did they do this in the beginning? No, uh, we went to to the stores. We took only food items. We took each thing, item by item by item. We watched uh, bacon go from uh, 69 cents a pound to $1.29 a pound. Now, did you get any more for your hogs at that time? Not as I recall. And uh, we did not uh, do any comparison shopping on, uh, you know, the, the hardware, the drug yeah. items, or things of that sort. In fact, I think all of us have come to the conclusion that the hardware store man handle hardware, let the druggist handle uh, the drug items, and uh, let each man have his own business. We feel that the supermarkets are cutting into fields other than food. Now, uh, it isn't all our fault that these things are in there. They, they've put them in, sure, to draw women who are unaware of what they are, what they are doing. I think that a grocery store should be a grocery store. And let the food stores sell food. But do they have to move into every area of business? This is, this is what they're doing to you farmers. Don't you realize that they own their feedlots, their bakeries, uh, their packing houses? You, you know how many packing houses have gone out of business lately. And uh, what we are trying to do with this new national organization is to be able to have investigations made and to prove that these stores are monopolies, and then let them be regulated. Let them be regulated by the government as other monopolies are. 
beautiful speech. Beautiful I'm speech. sorry. That's all right. You know, <laughs> we, let's get back to uh, agriculture, really. Do you gals who, uh, who actually live on a farm, uh, how many in Colorado last year left the farm, Bonnie? Uh, I think... Uh, yes, uh, I saw in the paper just the other day a thousand farmers. A thousand farmers left their farms in and one went... one year. Where did they go? In just Colorado. Well, they probably populated the towns more. Now, uh, as I understand also in Nebraska last year, uh, several thousand farms were sold, people left their farms. And uh, in your opinion, uh, Pauline, what's happening to these people? What are they going to do when they go to town? Well, they're just going there. Let's don't get in our head that the farmers are dumb, because they're not. And they're going to knock a city man off of his job. Why? How can he do that? Because he's going to be more ambitious. He's used to long hours, and he's a hard worker. He's not going to worry about his coffee break, because he doesn't get one on the farm. And I don't know of any farmers that have went to town and wanted, really wanted a job that didn't get a job of some kind. And they're not real particular about what kind of job at first. Because once they get started, they move up the line pretty fast. They find out that a farmer is just as smart as a city man. I agree 100%. You know, like, don't get mad at me. I just ask. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, seriously, this is what is happening. And these people are... Uh, very efficient. They know how to uh, manage their time and their money because they sure aren't getting uh, very much as I understand. Now, what about the children? Are, are your children uh, staying on the farm? Well, I have one son and he is a college graduate, but he likes the way of life on the farm. How long he can stay there, we don't know. But, and he thinks it's a wonderful place to raise a family. I have one son that's a veterinarian, and he still feels like he's connected with the farm. Yes. And I have a daughter, and of course she's, uh, her husband's still in school, which will be a doctor too. But now, uh, it seems to me then you're, you're urging education for these I children. I certainly am, because they're going to need it, because the way things are going, I'm afraid these children won't have a chance on the farm. What do you mean things? The way things the farmers. Are the way they're leaving the farm, the way they're being squeezed out. Uh, Bonnie, what about your family? Do, do you, would you like to take them to town? Oh, no, not at all. Well, the oldest is 15, so they're all still home. And uh, I don't know, I have four boys. I don't know how they'd like town. I don't, they have their animals and all, and I'm sure they wouldn't enjoy town at all. Do you think that the, uh, the children have uh, more respect for their uh, elders. Uh, do you know, I guess this is kind of a passe thing you're not even supposed to mention anymore, but do you think farm children have this? Well, I certainly do. Um, of course, I don't know, I think so many people in town, the parents both work, and I feel that uh, maybe the children are left on their own so much more that the, on the farm they work right along with their parents, and their parents are there and to supervise. I think it makes for a healthier uh, place for the children to be raised. Do you think the, the, what do we call it, a family farm? Is this the right way, yes, the right that's term? what we're fighting for, is family farms. Do you think this is uh, almost on the way out? I sure do. I think we're well on our way out when we lose a thousand farmers a year, just in one state. Uh, I, I would like to say, Doris, that uh, I think it's very necessary for the, uh, for the farmers to organize. I don't know, uh, they've been, I know, trying, but now I think the farmer and the consumer, since we have found how much at fault we are, uh, I think the farmer should admit that he has faults, and one of them is uh, disorganization, if I can use that word, and another uh, fault he has, sometimes he's plain knuckle-headed, too. You gals agree? Yes, yeah. I'm afraid so. If your husbands are watching, <laughs> we're dead, you know. <laughs> well, at least they're trying to do something about it, but there's a lot of farmers that I feel aren't trying to do anything about it. Well, this is true. Uh, I, I think that all farmers should be made to see that it's very necessary that uh, the farmers join together, and by golly now, you have the consumers ready to join and help fight. Uh, I think that this, this is a thing that should be, but in any way, you are part of the consumer public, and uh, a great part. You consume a lot more things than uh, the ordinary city family. 
You know what it might take is somebody to go out to all of the uh, farmers in all of the area and say to them the same thing that made you housewives mad in Denver, huh? You know, like, uh, you'll never do it. I don't think you'll ever make it. Do you think this is possible? To join oh, forces? Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I got in enough trouble with that bottle of dollars. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I have a little chart here. I don't know. We could probably pick it up, but it's just uh, actually two lines that are uh, at this point uh, separated. And as you can see, this, as I understand now, is the uh, cost of or the price paid to the farmer. And you can see it started going down, down, down. And they tell me that in 1967, the the price of food is going to go way, way up. Now. I'll uh, let you see this and see if you agree that this is the thing that you feel is going to happen. I mean, it's just plain two lines that are being separated. Shouldn't they be sort of together, Gail? Yes, I do. Do you but think they're going to be paying more than that? Well, uh, now, uh, I think that uh, I've explained this a lot of times, but I want to do it again. We have uh, sort of a little half circle here. The farmer is here at one end. The consumer is here at the other. You aren't getting your just profits no. or your products. Now, it's predicted that next year, food prices will go up 5%. It's also predicted that your, uh, the price that you get for your products is going to go down. Well, you're getting gouged at one end, and we're getting gouged at the other. So I think maybe it's time we became partners and uh, we have found out from our very feeble efforts that, uh, like I said, of this, their canneries, their uh, bakeries, and all of these things, and we wonder if uh, maybe one group of people aren't acting as uh, the middleman and also the taker in at the other end of uh, where the consumer buys his food. You know, I just got to say this about the city housewives, though. Sure, okay, so they're lazy, and they enjoy going to the... Uh, supermarkets, you know, where you can, a one-stop shopping center type thing. But, oh, I think I'm, uh, I'm really sticking my neck out here, but I sort of uh, blame the farmers, too, because they, um, sometimes it seems to me, are waiting for George, you know, over here to uh, do this, and, uh, well, maybe uh, if I sit back long enough, the uh, other guy will get it done. So. And this is, in, as uh, you said, mentioned, Rose, uh, my feeble efforts of understanding this agricultural situation, it just seems to me that the, the farmer should be uh, a bargaining group to uh, get the price. Now, uh, and I'll use a, an example here, the only thing I know of. For instance, uh, if I were to go into a store and uh, buy a pair of shoes or ask about a pair of shoes that ordinarily sells for, say, $15, and I would say to the uh, merchant, I tell you what I'll do. I'll give you 10. Isn't this the way the, the farmer's working right. right now? That's right. Well, this just doesn't make sense to me. So why don't they get together? Why don't they organize so that they can say, well, uh, this is what we want? I don't know how this is done exactly, I understand. As I say, my feeble efforts to understand this situation. Doesn't it seem like this would be the answer? That's oh, right. Do you think that this would help? That's right. But I wonder sometimes whether it isn't a little bit late. Do I you think really? it's about 20 years late. I think 20 it's a little years? bit late. But uh, we, uh, we still might be able to save the family farm. And believe me, if we don't do it now, we're not going to be able to do it. Ten years from now, everything will be uh, big corporate farms, and we won't have anything to say about what we pay for food. Ten or years? What we get for food. That's right. We'll pay a lot more for groceries and food than we are now because they're going to tell us, and nobody's going to say a word about it. They're just going to purchase it. Just don't ever say it's too late. Well, I, I, now, here again, I, I think the farmer should be told just as we were told. Now, I have talked to farmers, and they said, well, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Let's Man, do something going. about it right <laughs> now. It's gone somewhere, uh, right? We have, to, we, we have to check it right now. And I think that... Uh, uh, you farmers will discover that the housewives and city consumers are back at you 100 percent. Is that we kind, of hope so. kind of encouraging? Yes, yes, it is. We hope they are. When you get knuckle-headed, we'll come out and hit you on the head. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> now, let me ask you one other thing here. Uh, and I, I don't think we'll have near enough time, but we keep saying they. How, uh, how is this big spread? Uh, in your opinion, Pauline, who's to, who's to blame for this, uh, the farmer leaving the farm, the, the farms being sold, in your opinion? Well, if I say, maybe my banker won't lend me any more money, but I think it's the bankers because the farmer raises the feed and why doesn't the banker lend him the money to feed his feed and make the few dollars there is to make? Instead, they'd rather lend it to the big operator. And this is what's happened in lots of instances. The big operator then gets together way in the spring and already have made up their mind what they're going to pay that farmer for his feed. Before it's even grown? Before it's even oh, grown. Yes. That's right. In many instances, this is the way it works, whether farmers realize this or not. And there isn't that competition at all anymore. But I, real down deep, I feel like the banker is to blame for a lot of it. He'd rather lend to a big outfit than he would a small family type farmer. Buying of course, the farmer is certainly to blame, too, because the farmers are getting out and trying to do anything about it. They're still sitting back and saying, well, give me what you give me, that's fine. I'm going to work 24 hours a day almost and still give my stuff away for whatever they're going to give me for it. Amazing. I mean, uh, uh, this is an intelligent group of people, but it's not intelligence, really. Is this, is this a, an economic thing that you're forced into? Why is uh, it? I sort of think we are. Yes. Uh, our parents did it, so it's good enough for us, I guess. Times have changed, uh, you I know? Guess. This is a new generation, a new time. But you say that in uh, 10 years, you mentioned um, earlier, uh, Pauline, mm. that you had talked with a, a scientist uh, recently at some meeting you attended. And what were his uh, views on, on what's going to happen about well, the food? Uh, we're not going to have enough food, regardless of how many surpluses they say we have, that we're not, boy, the population explosion, we're not going to have enough food. And it's closer and sooner than we think. And then someone asked him the question about, well, what about the ocean seaweed and the ocean foods? And he said, once we start harvesting that, we'll be surprised how short that will be because it's been millions and millions of years that this has grown there in, in the bottom of the ocean. And he said, it's, it'll be sooner than we think that uh, we'll be hungry. Well, I hope that from just that, uh, I've learned a lot here. And I, I feel that uh, maybe our viewers will have learned a little bit. Can they uh, get information? Uh, how can they uh, possibly find out uh, how they can organize? Maybe we should mention that uh, there is an organization, and there are many farm organizations that do good jobs throughout the country. But the National Farmers Organization, for instance, bringing um, the U.S. Farm Report to the viewers, is uh, one, it seems to me, that's doing something, at least attempting to do something. Uh, do you feel this way, Bonnie? It's trying to organize the farmers. The farmer is the only um, part of the economy that actually isn't organized. I mean, your teachers have their organizations that fight for their salaries, and, and now the housewives are organized to, to fight for what they want, but the farmers are about the only economy that, part of the economy that isn't organized. You know what they need, don't you? Is a good <laughs> woman to lead them. You know? <laughs> I like the job. <laughs> uh, I just happen to have some uh, remarks here from uh, the Secretary of Agriculture of the United States, uh, Mr. Freeman, who said when the housewife uh, boycott started, he gave them credit for not blaming the farmer. Now, it seems to me that uh, the housewives then aren't, as uh, Pauline said, they aren't quite as... Uh, dumb as they might look either, you know, and um, I, I don't like the term, I'm just a housewife. This has got to go, Pauline, don't ever say it again, because if the housewives united and the farmers united, just think what you'd have there, you know? We could have the greatest organization in the world. Nobody could, could be. Farm, farmers and the housewives, or uh, I don't like to exclude the house husbands either. Okay, we'll count them. <laughs> Well, I want to count. All right. 
And, uh, but all of us together, as the producers and consumers, if we get together, then we can have one of the greatest things in the world. But if we're going to sit back and let George do it, or if I'm going to back, sit back and let Jane do it, then it just isn't going to get done. You have to do it yourself. What about uh, the membership? You thought I'd never ask, didn't you? Yeah, uh, yeah, at the beginning. <laughs> of the uh, housewives. And uh, by the way, this uh, title is sort of long. Uh, Rose is the president of the United National Consumers. Did I get it right? The United National Consumers Association, uh, but you can cut it down to Tonka. Tonka? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, how many members do you have now? Well, I don't know because the membership uh, goes into Washington. I, uh, as you know, uh, got quite a few memberships last night uh, at an NFO meeting. And I'm so proud of the farmers. I just have to say that. But uh, now to get information about this, they can write to me here in Denver. I think everybody knows my address. Uh, or they can write to the uh, office in Washington that is at 7979 Old Georgetown Road, Washington, D.C., 20014. <laughs> it has to have that zip code on it. I, I, I wasn't going to do it, but you I'm going to tell them. You know, she gets mail. To what about the, the uh, say it? Don't oh, know. the feisty grandmother. Feisty Denver, Colorado. <laughs> Address it to there. Denver, Colorado. She'll get it. <laughs> Mrs. Rose West, Mrs. Adam West. No, and I'm not Mrs. Adam West. Adam? Yes. No, certainly not. Is that right? No. Whatever it's happened Paul. to Paul. I don't know. What happened to Paul? <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly we want to uh, say that uh, in all seriousness, these things that we have talked about today, I hope have been of uh, some value to you, that you have learned that there is a joining of forces, so to speak, the Housewives of America and the Farmers of America. And if the Housewives can uh, organize, it would seem to me that the farmers and the farm families could organize. And in just a couple of minutes here that we have, Bonnie, do you feel that if uh, one minute is what it is, we'll uh, be able to get this thing done? I mean, be uh, optimistic about it if we, we try? Oh, well, yes. I think we better or else. We're not going to be farm wives anymore. And you want to be a farm wife? Yes, I do. How about you, Pauline? Well, I feel like Bonnie does. And don't say just a housewife from now on, okay? Okay. And we do want to thank all of you for being with us this afternoon. It's been a very uh, great privilege for me to have this opportunity to uh, visit with these ladies and to talk to you about the housewives' concern for agriculture. And I think uh, after this discussion, you'll agree that the housewives all over America are concerned, and if you heard them say, we better be concerned <laughs> about agriculture. Thank you, and good afternoon. Thank you, Gail. Thank you. U.S. Farm Report has presented Housewives' Concern for Agriculture with Women's Director Doris Berry of KTVS-TV Sterling, Colorado, leading the questioning. Members of the National Farmers Organization invite you to tune in again next week at the same time for more facts in agriculture and rural America, which is the gear wheel in our economy that produces the majority of our nation's new wealth. The farm income pattern sets the nation's prosperity, and the National Farmers Organization represents new thinking in a new generation of farmers. Thank you.